We'd like to welcome all who join us this evening for the Easter Vigil. In a special way, we welcome the Sisters of the Sorrowful Mother at Franciscan Courts, and the parishioners at Saints Peter and Paul in Wyawiga, Sacred Heart in Manawa, St. Mary in Winnicani, and St. Mary in Amro, and here at St. Raphael in Oshkosh. We will begin our Easter Vigil in about five minutes. Let's prepare our hearts as we enter into this most holy night. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And dear brothers and sisters, 
on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall live and have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. All time belongs to him and all the ages. To him be glory and power through every age forever and ever. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. Amen. May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the triumph of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her, ablaze with the light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. 
Rejoice! Let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the people. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord is Son, his only begotten. For who our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you let our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shot through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave, you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocent to the fallen, and joy to mourners. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine them to the human. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle as solemn offering, the work of these and of your servants an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. 
Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star. The one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who came back from death's domain, has shed his peaceful light on humanity, and lives and reigns forever and ever. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people, and in these, the last days, has sent his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this Paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. <clears throat> In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus, evening came, and morning followed, the first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came, and morning followed the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night 
Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the fourth day. Then God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was and God blessed them saying, be fertile multiply and fill the water of the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came and morning followed the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air and the cattle, and over all the wild animals and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them saying, be fertile and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, see, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day God was finished with all the work he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The Word of the Lord.
and let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. Early the next morning, Abraham saddled his donkey, took with him his son Isaac and two of his servants as well, and with the wood that he had cut for the holocaust, set out for the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham got sight of the place from afar. Then he said to his servants, Both of you stay here with the donkey, while the boy and I go over yonder. We will worship and then come back to you. Thereupon, Abraham took the wood for the Holocaust and laid it on his son Isaac's shoulders while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two walked on together, Isaac spoke to his father Abraham. Father, Isaac said. Yes, son, he replied. Isaac continued, here are the fire and the wood. But where is the sheep for the Holocaust? Son, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the sheep for the Holocaust. Then the two continued going forward. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Next, he tied up his son Isaac and put him on top of the wood on the altar. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Abraham named the site Yahweh Yireh. Hence, people now say, on the mountain the Lord will see. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies. And in your descendants, all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord.
Let us pray. O God, Supreme Father of the faithful, who increase the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the world, and who, through the Paschal mystery, make your servant Abraham, father of nations, as once you swore. Grant, we pray, that your people may enter worthily into the grace to which you call them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you lift up your staff and with your hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two. The Israelites may pass through it on dry land, but I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army and his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am a Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. Sing the song of freedom, sing the song of freedom. God has won the victory, God has won the victory. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. The angel of God, who had been leading Israelites' camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud, also leaving the front, took up its place behind them. It came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel, but the cloud now became dark. And thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Sing the song of freedom, sing the song of freedom. God has won the victory, God has won the victory. Horse and chariot are cast 
stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to the right and to the left. Sing the song of freedom, sing the song of freedom. God has won the victory, God has won the victory. For sad chariot are cast into the sea. For pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went in after them, right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic. He so clogged the chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians.
the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well, you shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully, listen that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way, and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, 
to our God, who is generous and forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. 
Hear, O Israel, the commandments of life. Listen and know prudence. How is it, Israel, that you are in the land of your foes, grown old in a foreign land, defiled with the dead, accounted with those destined for the netherworld? You have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. Had you walked in the way of God, you would have dwelt in enduring peace. Learn where prudence is, where strength, where understanding, that you may know also where are length of days and life, where light of the eyes and peace. Who has found the place of wisdom? Who has entered into her treasuries? The one who knows all things knows her. He has probed her by his knowledge. The one who established the earth for all time and filled it with four-footed beasts. He who dismisses the light and it departs, calls it and it obeys him trembling, before whom the stars at their post shine and rejoice. When he calls them, they answer, here we are, shining with joy for their maker. Such is our God. No other is to be compared to him. He has traced out the whole way of understanding and has given her to Jacob, his servant, to Israel, his beloved son. Since then, she has appeared on earth and moved among people. She is the book of the precepts of God, the law that endures forever. All who cling to her will live, but those will die who forsake her. Turn, O Jacob, and receive her. Walk by her light toward splendor. Give not your glory to another, your privileges to an alien race. Blessed are we, O Israel, for what pleases God is known to us. The Word of the Lord.
Let us pray. O God, who constantly increase your church by your call to the nations, graciously grant to those who you wash clean in the waters of baptism the assurance of your unfailing protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. With joyful gratitude for all the signs and wonders of salvation and life, let us sing glory to our God. Let us pray. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul, to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him 
so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more, death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all, as to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear of him and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the women in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus, the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead and he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Then they went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed, and ran to announce this to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go, tell my brothers to go to Galilee, 
and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. I say the Lord is risen. You say he is risen indeed. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. My brothers and sisters, as we celebrate this beautiful feast of Easter, this Easter Vigil Mass, we are in some sense going back to our roots because we're celebrating this great feast within our homes. The Jewish celebration of the Passover, which took place every single year, and which called to mind God's miraculous rescue of the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. The Passover feast was not celebrated in synagogues. It was not celebrated in churches. Every year, the Israelites commemorated the greatest act of God's liberation for them in their homes. They celebrated the great feast of Passover within their homes. Families were gathered around the dinner table sharing not just the memory of what God had done for them, but what God was continually doing for them. And so we, like our Jewish brothers and sisters, call to mind today God's miraculous power over our slavery of sin and death. My dear friends, Easter is, quite simply, the declaration of Christ's victory over the powers of darkness that oppress us. And quite finally, the power of death from which no one can escape, and from which we are reminded in these times in a particular way, continues to be present in our human family. In Jesus Christ's ultimate battle against the enemy, against the oppressor, against the father of lies, he was not content to merely sideline the enemy, as evidenced in curing the sick, expelling the demonic, raising Jairus' daughter from the dead, the miraculous raising of Lazarus himself from the dead. Jesus Christ does not merely sideline the enemy. Jesus Christ went for the jugular and transforms death by his resurrection. Death, the definitive sign of the evil one's reign. He transforms death into the pathway to life everlasting. I am tempted in my heart tonight to be saddened that we cannot be gathered together but the joy of the resurrection is meant precisely for a time such as this. I heard the Lord saying in my heart this morning, if there is sadness in your heart, let it be gone. If there is sadness in your heart, let it go. Allow yourselves to experience as the first disciples experienced on that Easter morn, the wonder, the sheer grace of Christ's risen presence. My brothers and sisters, the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed.
Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptism. May he graciously renew us that we may remain faithful to the spirit whom we have received. Lord, our God, in your mercy, be present to your people who keep vigil on this most sacred night. And for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, make this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is completed, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in his holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I, I do. do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I, I do. do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I, I do. do. Do you believe in God, the Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I, I do. do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I, I do. do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Having been given new life 
by God as he gave life to his son Jesus. In confidence, we turn to the Father with our prayers. For God's holy church, renewed this night in the sacred waters of baptism, as we joyfully proclaim in our words and deeds the salvation won by Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gifts of new life, hope, and peace in every nation of the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who struggle from economic hardships, especially during these difficult days, may we be good stewards of the bounty that God has given us and assist those in greatest need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our communities of faith in Amro and Winnicani, in Wyawiga and Manawa, and here at St. Raphael, may we be renewed this night and filled with the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all throughout the world who were preparing to be baptized or to enter into the Catholic Church this night, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For every need that is in our hearts, for our deepest yearnings, spoken and unspoken. For all those prayers written in our parish book of intentions, for all who have been compromised by the coronavirus and all in need of healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, and for our people of our parish, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we give you thanks for the many blessings you have bestowed upon us this night. Continue to keep us in the hope of your glory, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
and pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his Except we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our Lord, Jesus Christ, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Domin, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended 
by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, his almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel, to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, sinners, though your servants, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, 
not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through him you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant some peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
I invite you now to pause and to make together an act of spiritual communion, expressing our desire to receive the Lord. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. These have been very different 
but amazing days of the Triduum for all of us. We have walked together while still being apart. We have prayed together even though we aren't in our own churches. We have held each other close without leaving our homes. And tonight, strengthened in our faith and renewed in hope, we now go forth to proclaim with great joy that Jesus is truly risen and with us. Don't forget to keep that good news and keep not only keep it in your heart, but share that good news for the next 50 days of Easter time, even when there are only white and yellow jelly beans left in your basket. <laughs> so a very holy and happy Easter to all of you. I carry all of you in my heart these days if you've been praying this blessed Triduum with one another. Know what my prayers for all of you. Know that I carry you there in my heart, and I ask the Lord to bless you abundantly in this beautiful Easter season, celebrating his victory over sin and death. May the Lord give you that beautiful joy of his presence today. Again, thanks to all of you for praying with us through these holy days. Thanks for all your words of encouragement and all of your prayers. Um, we're so grateful to that. I also want to say a very special thank you um, to a few people who have worked very hard during this Holy Week. Even though there aren't any people here, um, there still is a lot of work that needs to be done. First and foremost, to Sarah Erickson, who's our Director of Social Communications. Sarah has been wonderful in communicating in so, so many different ways and in making these live streams possible and, and putting them also out many different ways after. So thank you, Sarah. And also thank you to our liturgy coordinator, our music coordinator, Karen Main, for all that she has done in planning and organizing these days, moving from all the different choirs down to one cantor each time. Um, so thank you very much, Karen, as well. Thanks to Emily and all of our musicians throughout these nights. Um, and we know that our choirs have been singing at home, and thanks to you who wish you were here singing along. We invite you to join again tomorrow morning in prayer, Easter Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life and the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia. Thank you.